Hi, I'm Josh Lambert, the Group Product Manager for the Enablement section. And today I'd like to walk through some of the highlights and updates that we have in store uh, from the team in preparation for the August 3rd, that's this coming Monday, Group Conversation for Enablement. We, of course, look forward to all of your questions, so please do attend and add them to the docs if you can at a time. But looking forward to talking with you as always. Now, I think most folks probably at this point in time know who the section is and what we do. Also our categories, those have not changed. We have had to push back the maturity improvements for both cloud native installation and disaster recovery. It's taking a, a little bit more time for disaster recovery to add support for all the missing data types. And so that's what we're driving towards. It's still a number one focus of the team, completing it in Q3. And on the cloud native side, we still have some gaps compared to Omnibus for things like pages that we have to walk through. Hiring is complete. So we have everyone on board and we are continuing to see some of the newer folks continue to improve their velocity and the overall team velocity improve as well, which is fantastic to see. We'll talk more about those in the engineering metrics side of things. We are focusing on the product performance indicators as well. We have distribution done. We are being able to uh, complete both memory and database in 13.3. Geo and global search will take a bit more time because they are non-trivial. You can learn more about what the challenges are in both those issues, uh, but we are working to solve those in partnership with the telemetry team. Now, I mentioned that the memory group is completing their performance indicator in 13.3. This has been the culmination of a lot of work across 13.1, 13.2, and 13.3. We had to lay the foundation by being able to pull these metrics from Prometheus and we have support today for single node instances. This is some of the metrics that we're getting back from 13.1. 13.2 at the time of this recording is a little bit too new. It's only been out for about a week. And so the metrics are just starting to trickle back in. But 13.1, we have some interesting data here. And you can see, for example, the distribution of the vertical sizing of the single node instances. As you probably would expect, we have four and eight gigs of memory as the uh, significant uh, common uh, deployment sizes, along with two and four cores memory. That's probably pretty expected. What's maybe not quite as expected is that we have some very, very large vertically scaled instances. We have four with over a terabyte of RAM. We have five with 96 cores. And so there are quite a few customers who really just vertically scale up and really having some success in doing so. We also change recommendations here as part of the efficiency program to encourage users who can still fit within that single node size that to consider doing so. Uh, and so they can get the benefits and ease of management of one node without on the extra complexity of multi-node. So some proof points here on the vertical scalability of GitLab itself. Oh, and you can see just a whole bunch more metrics in this dashboard here. I just pulled out these two and we are continuing to do some further analysis as data comes back. Engineering metrics, I mentioned before, we are seeing improvements in the MR rate per member. So great job there team as we continue to ramp up and on board. And just quick note that we also have the highest raw number of contributions from the wider community, which is fantastic. So thank you so much to the community. And thank you so much to the team uh, who has been helping to usher these merge requests through and getting them merged. The priorities for enablement haven't changed. They have been the same throughout the entire year. So I'm not gonna focus on them. We are just continuing to drive these forward throughout the year. And dogfooding in particular, we are looking to complete the work for Petroni and also the Roosters feature in 13.3. So that is great. Uh, improvement on the dogfooding side of things. And we also had some good recent blog posts, get some traction. Craig wrote up a great blog most recently on migrating from Puma to GitLab and our experience. And they got picked up uh, as the lead item in last week's Ruby Weekly. 
which is great and it's linked there. So if you're curious, check it out. There's some brief conversation on their threads. And thank you, Craig, for a great blog post. That brings us to our group highlights. I'll go relatively quickly through these and we can get into details, of course, on the call. Database team still focused on partitioning. We are wrapping up the audit events table and moving on to the container register table as the hottest priority because that is blocking some cost reduction efforts on .com. And so getting that table to scale is really important. And so that's the primary focus of the team along also with adding support for our performance indicator. Coming up on distribution, we have some really exciting releases here. We're making progress on an OpenShift operator that will also work for Kubernetes and we'll be continuing to invest there in the future in the coming months to reduce the amount of maintenance required and hands-on work for running GitLab in, in Kubernetes. So really excited about that. We're also uh, should be shipping the first iteration, which the team has validated with customers, will address their needs in the first iteration for separating configuration and secrets. That's been a big ask. So thank you so much to the team to get that done. And we're also making progress on both Postgres 12 and Patroni. And I'll talk more about those a bit later as well. So in particular, these are kind of linked, but Patroni will offer a number of benefits and we are getting ready to launch that here in partnership with Postgres 12 and 13.3. You can see some of the benefits here. It will support additional multi-node Postgres clusters on the secondary, which would be great for people who want to be able to fill over to a fully sized instance, as well as also reducing the amount of manual intervention required in case a failed primary goes, uh, comes back online. And of course, it also unlocks Postgres 12, which while beginning is 13.2, we'll be going on 13.3 with support for new installs, upgrades, and multi-node deployments with Patroni. Uh, so, you know, three releases ago, we shipped Postgres 11 as required. And here in 13.3, we'll have great support for Postgres 12 um, and giving folks a lot of time to either leverage the benefits of Postgres 12 or prepare for the requirements changing to PG-12 in May of next year. So great work, really impressed with that velocity here. On the orchestrator side of things, we are working to help uh, try and see how we can pull this in and work to deliver a solution that customers can try more quickly. We've been working on it for some time and so we're trying to pull it in and essentially get in customers' hands as soon as possible. So that is the current focus of the orchestrator team along with driving towards that alpha release to help address some gaps as the team has identified. Um, but look forward to uh, some of the effort. Uh, and if you have some opinions and can take a look, that'd be great as well. We mentioned OpenShift already, but very excited about that. On the Geo side, as mentioned earlier, we have the main focus of adding the missing data types for application so that when you fail over, all of your content is there. And we're targeting that again in Q3. So that's the main focus of the team. And once we have that done, we can then also work on other improvements for things like Jira application, for example, in Q4, where we can make the fact that you're on a pro, uh, the main master node, the main GitLab node, or a secondary node, sort of irrelevant, totally transparent. GitLab chooses the right node for you, and that's all you need to know. So we're looking, looking forward to that. That will, I think, result in a lot more adoption and leveraging of Geo in Q4 of this year. Global search, the main accomplishment that we just completed on July 15th was rolling out advanced global search for all of GitLab.com's paid groups. That was a culmination of half of a year of work and a ton of improvements that also, of course, went to self-managed as well. And at 13.3, we're continuing to improve the operational side of things as we now have a much larger index to work from. We're also looking to improve the user experience and relevance and overall performance of certain returning queries. And on the memory side of things, we are primarily focused on improving performance. That has been the resounding feedback from our MPS surveys, and that has been the focus of the team for some time. 
we are working on providing support for dynamic resizing images so that we deliver just the size that the web page requires. And that way we can reduce the amount of traffic sent across the wire, as well as the amount of work the browser has to do to resize and relay out images. And this has, in some cases, been the number one improvement that we can make to improve performance, in some cases, by up to two and a half seconds per page. So really excited about this and the impact it will have on our users and the user experience. And I mentioned before, also mentioned that we're working on finishing up the performance indicators and further performance improvements as well. And with that, I think we'll wrap up. If you could, of course, read through the other challenges, I meant, tried to mention these as I went through the uh, presentation already. Um, so please do attend our call on Monday. We'd love to hear from you, love to answer your questions, and we can go into details on any of these that you'd like to have more questions on. Thank you so much and talk to you Monday.